okay so today we will be building an end-to-end -end infrastructure provisioning with vpc ec2 alb and rds using terraform so this is the architecture diagram where we'll be building the vpc infrastructure with the bastion host nad gateway internet gateway and then we will be building these public subnets in two availability zones two private subnets to hold the ec2 instances and then the private uh, private subnets to hold the databases so this will be a multi az uh, scenario so let us start let me bring my vs code okay so this is a manifest file for terraform we have a provider block for terraform we are keeping the US East 1 as the region these are the input variables the local values and now coming to the main uh, main file which is the VPC Terraform module file we are giving here the name the CIDR block availability zones public subnets and the private subnets and this is the subnets for the database we are enabling the NAT gateway and if we come forward to the VPC auto TFRs you can see we are having custom VPC this is the name of the VPC the VPC CIDR block of 10.16.0.0 slash 16 the availability zones which is the US East 1A and the US East 1B these are the CIDR blocks for the public subnets, the private subnets and the database subnets. Going forward, this is the security group for the bastion host which is in the public subnet. As you can see in the ingress rule, we are opening an SSH port for the CIDR block of everyone to open to all. And when we go for the security group which is in the private for the private EC2 instances we are giving it an SSH rule of ingress rule of SSH HTTP 80 and HTTP 8080 in the in the ingress CIDR block we are opening it to only the CIDR block of our uh, VPC which is this 10.16.0.0 slash 16 going forward this is the security group for the ALB where we are uh, giving an ingress rule of HTTP 80 and HTTPS 443. The ingress CIDR block is every open to all. And this is the security group for our database. And as you can see, we are opening it or oh, we are just opening the ingress cider block is the vpc cider block which is this as it is a mysql database so we are opening port to 3306 so this is the data source for our ami, AMI ids this is the ec2 instance module for our AWS EC2 instances we are giving it a name AMI ID instance type key name which is the key pair PEM file VPC security IDs the subnet groups IDs okay so going forward this is the bastion host which will be in the public subnet again we are giving it a name AMI ID instance type key name subnet id vpc security groups and tags let me show you the tf uh, auto tf vars for the ec2 instance we are t doing a t2 micro this is the instance key pair that we created in uh, the tf uh, key file in uh, in aws this is the elastic ip that we will be creating this is the null resource that will create the connection block, the file provisioner, and the remote ex exec. 
going forward to our ALB module the the name is given as local dot name ALB load balancer type is application VPC ID is the VPC ID CIDR block the security groups the NS subnet IDs for listener we are keeping it port 80 and protocol HTTP for the target groups we are giving it a name prefix of TGALB backend protocol is HTTP backend port is 80 and the target type is instance going forward this is this is our targets so we have two EC2 instances in the private subnet so we are giving it here we are referencing it the IDs the first uh, EC2 instance and the second EC2 instance now we will be going towards our RDS so we are giving it an identifier it's just a name engine is my SQL engine version is 8.0.33 family is my SQL 8.0 major major engine version is 8.0 the instance class is DB 3T3 micro allocated storage is 20 and max storage is 100 we are giving it a, it a name, username, password, and the port, which is 3306. Multi AZ, yes, we are uh, giving it a true value. Subnet IDs, database subnet IDs, the VPC group IDs. We are giving a maintenance window, a backup window, and enabling CloudWatch logs exports. Going forward, we are giving it a backup retention period, a skip final snapshot to true, and deletion protection to false. Okay, so let us let me bring my terminal now. Okay, so ls. So we are in our Terraform manifest folder. Now we'll do Terraform in it. To initialize the back uh, Terraform backend, it will initialize uh, modules and uh, all the things. So let us see. Okay, so Terraform has been successfully initialized. Let us do Terraform validate success. This configuration is valid. Okay, let's clear the screen now. Let us do Terraform plan. It will now ask us for our password. Let us give a random password here. Paste. Now it will provide us with the plan all the resources that we are trying to create in our AWS okay so these are all the outputs and uh, in total it will create 52 resources in total okay so let us now go forward and do a terraform apply it will ask us for the database password yes let us paste it here enter it will also ask us to enter a value here which is will be yes and uh, okay so now we will enter yes and now we will wait for all the resources in our AWS to be in the ready state okay so it took a time and uh, around 18 minutes or so and uh, it has applied it has completed resources are being applied which are in total 54 these are all the outputs that we asked for it is a list long list of it now let us go to our uh, AWS management console so First of all, let us go to the VPC. 
then we will be going to the EC2 instances and then the RDS. So we are in the VPC management console. As you can see, we have two VPCs. One is the default one and the second one is a custom VPC that we created. It has a CIDR block of 10.16.00.16. So this is the VPC ID and in the resource map we can see that US in the US East 1 we have three, uh, three subnets and in US East 1B we have three subnets. The route tables and also the network connections. So as we can see we, we have six subnets here and uh, likewise for the route table we have routable for the VPC public, VPC private subnet and the DB subnets. We have internet gateway attached. Going forward we have elastic IP also and yes we have elastic IP also attached. And lastly in the VPC console we will be having a NAT gateway. It's available. Okay now let us go to the EC2 management console. And as we can see, we have instances that are running. These are three instances. Two are in the private subnets and one is in the public subnet, which is a bastion host. Let us go towards the load balancer. And this is the load balancer that we created. And uh, in its listener and rules, we have one target group attached to it with HTTP port 80. Let us go to that target group. So in this target, we have two total of two targets. Both are in healthy state. And in our targets, we have those two instances that are in the private subnet development VM1 and VM2 with port 80 in US East 1A and the US East 1B both are in healthy state. This is the health check status. Now let us go towards the security groups and let me show you the security group This is a security group for our RDS DB. So these are the inbound rules with TCP protocol and the port range is 3306. Our source is the CIDR range of our VPC. Let us go to the public bastion security group, the bastion host and we have opened just a SSH access and the source of all. Let us go to the private uh, security group and as we can see we have all no, all the security port ranges that we opened it. SSH access custom TCP HTTP with our CIDR ranges. Lastly let us go to the load balancer security group for the inbound rules, we have HTTP, HTTPS and the custom TCP with the source of uh, all. Now let us go towards the dashboard for RDS, RDS management console and in the DB instances we can see we have one instance running and this is the instance that we created. It is available the role in uh, instance engine is mysql community in us is 1b size is db 3t3 micro okay so let us go inside okay we can see the port we can see the endpoint here the availability zones the vpc uh, the VP, db vpc the security group attached to it, the subnet group, the subnets, 
the security group rules replication let us go to the configuration you can see here easily our db name instance class storage type vcpu engine version db name ram okay i think that's pretty much it let me uh, do one last thing which is uh, we have to delete all our resources which we created i will be doing a terraform apply dash destroy dash auto dash approve and let's get that going okay that's pretty much it thank you